we would flip this question today as to why thin films. I would say if PV has to achieve its growth objectives, what role thin film plays? I think that's a better way of putting this proposition than just looking at thin films as one area of focus moving forward. Basically, some of us, I don't know how many of you here, I am not a diehard, you know, PV guy by birth. I come from a very different, very stable industry. I spent 20 years in global automotive business. So when, when we see PV, we see PV a little differently. We are technology manufacturing company by DNA. We produce, in India, which never was heard of, could produce a product which Japan and Taiwan would produce, but then things change these days, and Moza Bear today produces 3.6 billion discs a year, roughly 10 million a day, and 18 40-foot containers of discs being shipped every day. So the whole psyche is different. The approach to solar industry is different, and I, I sincerely submit that uh, we should view this 15 to 20 minutes as a, a kind of a, a proposition on why thin films, looking at how solar is going to be four to five years from now. And in that context, I think we look at thin film and global solar installation, I think we cannot isolate it anymore. We, we are a very large player in crystal silicon. So I would like to preempt that dialogue up front. We are a two-year-old company. We're already 80 megawatt in crystal silicon right now producing. December of this year, we'll be 180 megawatt of crystal silicon producing. We have right now a $2 billion worth of tranche on silicon wafers in the offing, firms signed up contracts. So, Whatever I talk about thin films today should not be viewed and or against crystal and silicon. It is a product which is standing on its own and that's the hypothesis for today. We talk about thin film and why. Amorphous silicon, that's our first product. You will see it tomorrow at Intersolar at our booth. The first modules will be there for you to see. The thin film plan, and a small summary. This is a chart which I think we all need to see, observe, carefully monitor. Sun doesn't fall on this earth uniformly. However, we try to use some of the applications we have learned in the last 15, 20 years on a cut and paste methodology. This very clearly says that Sun is different. It doesn't land on Earth in the same conditions, same temperature quotient, same diffuse sunlight. Different things happen. Geography is important, and if PV has to become global, you cannot have an application of country X cut and paste to country Y. Unfortunately, we've been very localized in this industry. It, it's been a very, very, I would say, uh, limited or a myopic viewpoint on how we have seen this industry. Temperatures are important as we move forward in terms of how the output we record. Response is different. We have different technologies now yielding in kilowatt hours, cents per kilowatt hours, different number of units, and I think they have become very, very important going forward. This chart we always like to show. It's courtesy sharp, but we believe this is the future of PV. If you look at it, you will see that there are areas by physics will have applications better in crystal silicon here, Concentrators will play a big role here. We believe thin films will be very strong in these kind of areas. 
But earlier, we always used to think as a 200 watt peak module and how much units it produces, nobody cared. So the focus was to produce as many modules and price them to the extent the market could bear. But finally, what they produced in terms of units which we could measure. And the units are the currency of tomorrow. It is not the watt peak. And we all sitting in this room now understand the paradigm shift which has gone through. It's very, very clear. Last three to four years, the ratio of rooftop to large installations was 30 to 70%, 30% large installations, 70% rooftop. Look what has happened. It's reversed. The large installations are now the majority, but the market size has become so big that even rooftops will be a very significant megawattage. But no, it's the larger market which is basically half a megawatt plus is the future because if you grow in an industry 5x or 6x, you don't grow on rooftops. You have to grow it through large denominated installations. And that's the future. And when we look at the future and the pull, and if you believe it's a 10 plus gigawatt market in the next couple of years, it has to be large installations and installations yielding units which are competitive. And that's the point we talk about as of 10 films. And I, again, we can, we can debate, but this is how the curves look like with increasing temperatures, right moving from crystalline silicon, how it degrades to different kinds of thin film technologies. And obviously amorphous silicon at this time shows a very good resistance to degradation. And some of the facts I told you, technology choice is dependent on solar insulation and temperatures. It is not dependent on who your large producer in the world is and what they make. It is the application which will drive what product will succeed and not a manufacturer who decides to produce and the market will take. I think we're moving from a stage where it was selected few manufacturers, selected few markets pulled by subsidized environment and everybody made money, not realizing are we doing what is right for the industry. And I think at 10 plus gigawatt, it's an industry, it's no more a fragmented, segmented, you pat my back, I pack yours, no. We are talking about industrialization of photovoltaics. And a factor is very, very, very clearly stated. We are moving from watt peak denomination of photovoltaics to cents per kilowatt hours. 